In this video we're going to look at asymmetric line shapes and the data that we will consider are these HOPG carbon S signal and these include various features that must be accommodated by any peak model that include lost structures such as these pi pi star structures, a primary peak that must have asymmetry and also some background removal algorithm and in this case it's a Shirley algorithm that has been applied and these must all combine in a suitable way to allow data reproduction as seen here and also allow for chemical state changes that can be accommodated and modeled using peaks. Now the key point here is that the chemically shifted carbon peaks will appear within this asymmetric zone. So the importance of modeling the asymmetry correctly, which also means that we must model the background correctly, is all important if it's at all possible to understand carbon chemistry based on a carbon S measured from a graphitic material. The data reproduction is very good using these line shapes. And so it's worth starting off by describing this particular line shape which is related to the exponential tail function that was shown in a different video. And in this case, and I'll use an annotation option on the components property page of the annotation dialog window to simply display the line shape associated with all of these components. So I've just excluded virtually everything other than the line shape itself. So I end up with a table that shows me each individual component and the line shape that's associated with the component. So we've got two that represent these loss structures that are both generalized Lorentzian type. This is the LA line shape. And the one that represents the photo emission signal from carbon S from graphite itself is a SGL and it has a couple of parameters and then it's followed by phi and then two parameters. And these all together describe this particular line shape. Now it may seem like a complicated form for a line shape but they all have a function. The SGL 100 is producing a Lorentzian. The 240 is the width of a Gaussian so in fact this term here represents a convolution between a Lorentzian and a Gaussian but the Lorentzian is modified by an exponential tail and the exponential tail itself is scaled by this first parameter and the extent of the exponential tail is determined by this second parameter within the phi section. So together all of these parameters here yield the asymmetric line shape that we see as part of this peak model. And one of the characteristics of this line shape is that the line shape will decay to zero within a reasonable span in terms of energy. So this means that the area beneath this peak is well defined and then can be compared against other peaks such as these symmetrical peaks when we want to do any kind of quantification. The fact that we have a number of parameters within this line shape is that the asymmetry is quite difficult to reproduce for spectra such as these. So it requires some flexibility within the line shape in order to make such a fit where we've got a residual standard deviation within the bounds of what we'd expect for pulse counted data. So in order to manage such a list of parameters there are tools that will assist this and these appear on the quantification parameters dialog window on the components property page and what we do is we use the test peak model button but first we have to select a line shape and when we select the line shape this gives us an option for making adjustments to individual parameters within a line shape and refitting the data and seeing how this alters the peak model. So any line shape can be defined and a parameter is scanned by entering an interval within square brackets and then when the OK button is pressed the line shape will be scanned, a set of spectra will be generated and the residual standard deviation will be accumulated so that you can see how well a particular parameter influences a fit on a given set of data. 
Now in addition to allowing this type of scanning uh, and fitting of the data, you can also create stacks of spectra that are actually just the line shapes. So this allows you to scan a particular parameter and generate a file that gives you a visual feedback of how a parameter is altering a line shape. And we'll now illustrate this by isolating this asymmetric peak and then performing one of these scans that generate a new file containing line shapes only. Since the primary function of this dialog window is to allow the adjustment of parameters and refitting of the data, in order to create a file that just contains line shapes we need to set up a, a specific form of a VAMAS block with a line shape defined on it such that we can then calculate line shapes and this is done by removing all other components so we're just left with one component and then fixing each of the fitting parameters in that component and when we do this then when the operation is performed as specified on this dialog window then rather than fitting the data what it will do is generate a whole new set of VAMAS blocks that are created from the line shapes themselves so let's do that operation this will involve copying the VAMAS block to a new file. So let's do that, create a new file, copy, and then if we copy it'll include the peak model. And part of creating a file that contains just the line shapes involves deleting these additional components, so we're left with just a single component. And then to indicate that we're not going to perform any optimization as part of this process, we need to fix every one of these optimization parameters. So area, full width half maximum, and position, if I type hash and press return, then what happens is the interval that defines the range of possible values for each one of these parameters is set to be the value itself, so it's effectively fixing the optimization. So no optimization will be performed as a result of fixing these parameters. So this is the first step. I will also make an adjustment to the interval over which we will calculate the line shape and set the background type to be zero. So this means that the new VAMAS blocks will simply contain curves that are representative of this line shape when we make some adjustment to one of these parameters. So I've selected the line shape option within this component and now pressing test peak model gives me the same dialog window that would have been used for testing a parameter with respect to the data. We'll now adjust one of these parameters using the same notation. So I'm going to set this scale from 0, 1 and place that in square brackets. So this indicates that out of all of these parameters that the first parameter in this phi suffix will then be scanned and for each value within that scan a new VAMAS lock will be created and it will contain the data that is generated by replacing the original data with the line shape itself. So I'm going to press OK and it just asks do I really want to go ahead with this? Yes I do and it's just created a new VAMAS file and here are the VAMAS blocks. So when I overlay these, we get to see the curves that are generated using the line shapes to replace the data. And at the moment I've got a pair of vertical lines indicating that the normalization is active that will scale these line shapes from minimum to maximum. If I have one line that means it's tying at a point, if I have two lines that means it's normalizing over a range. So this is typical of what you would expect if you're going to fit a peak of a given height with an exponential tail line shape. You can see how the scale factor for a given set of parameters is altering the line shape that would be used as part of that peak model.